Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome you to this first session in the Vision 2020 series by Pine Tree Pictures. Uh, well, the topic today's uh, to topic for today's uh, di discussion is digitization of MSMEs, impact analysis of COVID-19. Uh, now, all of us obviously are going through the lockdown, the most unexpected situation in our lives. We never expected this to happen but then it is here and it is real and we need to understand it we need to respect it we need to understand what the government is telling us and honor that because if we stay patient we stay peaceful we'll be able to defeat this virus so without taking more of your time let me introduce our moderator for today mr anupam chaturvedi mr anupam chaturvedi is msc physics from Allahabad university later he did his pgdit from Indian Institute of Foreign Trade in New Delhi. And in 1982, he joined Export Credit Guarantee Corporation as a probationary officer. Soon he rose to the middle management level. And uh, in 1995, he took a leap of faith. So I know him closely, so I can tell you the journey has been very exciting. He took a leap of faith in 1995 and moved on to a German bank. At that time, it was called DG, uh, DG Bank AG, uh, which is a German bank. Uh, second largest German bank and with head office in Frankfurt. Now it has been renamed as DZ Bank AG, and he is the representative, the chief representative for India and Southeast Asia. So may I please welcome Mr. Anupam Chaturvedi to uh, start the session. Your camera is still muted. Audio is still muted. Is it yes, okay? Yeah. Absolutely good now. Uh, now, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I thought I'll just briefly introduce as to why we've chosen this topic, um, which is more uh, contextual today. Uh, just to give you an idea, in the context of uh, COVID-19, coronavirus, we all know that the concern to create a balance between life and livelihood is uppermost in the minds of the leadership in India and globally. While life is being monitored extremely cautiously, there seems to be substantive uncertainty to manage livelihood. Lost his audio. You are able to get it, Gautam? We lost your audio for a second. You can continue, please. Um, so while life is being monitored extremely cautiously, there seems to be substantive uncertainty to manage livelihood. Uh, MSMEs, micro, small and medium enterprises are therefore of critical importance at this juncture in India, as well as for several economies globally. COVID-19 pandemic in India and the resultant nationwide lockdown seems to be like the last straw on the camel's back for the MSME sector, already grappling with demonetization in 2016, introduction of GST in 2017, and a struggling Indian economy over the past couple of years. Just to give you an idea of the importance of MSME sector in India, in manufacturing, trading, and services. MSMEs are estimated to be about 60 million in numbers in India, producing more than 8,000 products, services, generating employment for almost 111 million total workforce. MSMEs contribute about 30% to India's GDP, account for almost 45% of industrial production in India, growing at 4.5% cumulative growth per annum, and account for almost 40% of India's exports. Just that uh, since my exposure has been large in Germany, and there are a lot of corresponding uh, features within the Indian and German economy, just to give you an idea, Germany is equally dependent on its MSMEs, they are called Mittelstand in Germany, where the data looks more impressive and forms the backbone of German economy. Mittelstand are about 4 million in numbers, which is almost 99% of all German companies. 
The metals stunt are defined in Germany by their sales turnover and number of employees. Uh, so just to give you an idea, micro and uh, between micro and medium size enterprises, the sales turnover varies between uh, 400 million rupees to uh, 40 uh, uh, billion uh, rupees and the number of employees ranges from 1 to 500 and beyond. Metal stunt employ about 58% of the workforce and contribute about 36% of total sales turnover of all companies in Germany. About 82% of the skilled manpower in Germany is trained in such metal stunt. Approximately 1,400 of such metal stunt companies are termed as global hidden champions, having long years of operations. And the metal stunt in Germany are funded through all channels like venture capital, private equity, cooperative banks, savings banks, private banks, non-bank finance companies, business development banks, government and export finance. However, noteworthy is that 97% are not publicly listed are in, and are family owned. Still, 58% have activities overseas and 66% of the metal stunt use renewable energy sources. So the comparison gives us an idea of the synergies between the Indian MSME sector and the German metal stand. Going forward, there could be more collaborative tendencies due to the macro advantage of metal stand getting global technologies into India and Indian MSMEs providing the market coverage both domestically as well as in the region. After the above brief description, I would like to briefly introduce the panel of experts present with us today, discussing mainly the present urgent needs of the MSME sector and going forward investment for digitalization in MSMEs. The global experience at the time of global financial crisis of 2007-8 has taught us that those companies which invested in the future reaped huge benefits vis-a-vis -vis companies which concern themselves only with the present. Therefore, to enable the MSMEs to conform to the present day needs and grow their effectiveness in near future, both domestically as well as internationally, digitalization as an important component is being raised in our discussions. Now, just to introduce the panel, uh, Mr. Atul Joshi, uh, he is a senior banker, ex-CEO of the International Rating Agency, um, which, which is owned by Fitch, and now involved with the government and trade bodies through his Oyster Capital Management Company. Mr. Nihar Pathare, Vice President, Information and Communication Technology and Chief Information Security Officer, 63 Moons Technologies Limited. Mr. Rahul Sahai, a widely experienced chief of staff channels, uh, business development and Six Sigma leader uh, for Cummins India Limited. Now I would just start with my uh, questions and then probably the uh, panel members could react. Uh, Mr. Atul Joshi, uh, the first question is, as soon as lockdown is relaxed for graded revival, of industrial units, what would be the immediate challenges for the MSME sector? Is the present definition of MSME as investment in plant and machinery up to rupees 100 million inadequate in present context of global market and digitalization? Mr. Atul Joshi. Thank you, Anupam. Uh, I guess let me answer the second question first that uh, whether a 100 million rupees of investment in capital is an adequate definition. I guess it's time to move away from uh, the definition deploying just the capital. We need to move to the turnover related definition and maybe a definition up to 500 crores of turnover would be more appropriate. We need to not just look at manufacturing, but a lot of services sector, which has come up, including logistics. So, you know, we need to look at various uh, definitions, various sectors that are contributing to the country and move away from plant and machinery. 
and look at a definition more concerned with the turnover. So present definition, yes, definitely is inadequate and does not give the context of uh, India's development. In terms of the issues that uh, the MSMEs would face once the lockdown is lifted, I guess the biggest issue is going to be the cash crunch. The MSMEs have started burning up the cash for paying salaries and wages where they are not earning. The cash on hand reflected in their balance sheets would by and large get exhausted to a great extent in their payment of salaries and wages. So the question is going to be once they are exhausted, how do they start their operation? The second issue which I see the MSMEs would face is the crunch in their working capital limits. Uh, obviously, they are uh, you know, facing issues of non-recovery from debtors. At the same time, creditors are going to mount uh, their demands for supply of raw material. They would ask for payments up front. There are issues of LC devolvement, whether it is domestic LC or import LC. Those have devolved on uh, the uh, manufacturers, which are set off against their working capital limits. Now, the government really needs to think in terms of converting these devolved LCs into working capital term loan to give some breather. But if it is not done, obviously the MSMEs are going to face the crunch in their working capital to start their day-to-day -day operations in terms of purchasing material, etc. There are MSMEs which would need some kind of uh, a startup or jumpstart kind of uh, infusion. Uh, say, for example, somebody has a boiler. Now, if a boiler is shut, shut for you know two months, three months, four months, you need to invest some kind of money to start your operations. These are the things which I think cash crunch in different formats is going to hit the MSMEs the worst, and they need to be supported for some kind of cash infusion at the beginning. Good. Uh, thank you, uh, Tu. Um, I would now just uh, go to uh, Mr. Nehar Patare. Uh, to kickstart the discussion with him, because uh, as I said, we while we are very concerned with the present situation, but it will be an ideal solution to look also for the future investments where digitalization would play an important role. So the first question, uh, Mr. Nehar Patare, to you is one of the major roadblocks for MSME growth is data sufficiency and accuracy, and how can this be addressed through digitalization? Uh, <clears throat> Uh, thanks, yeah. Arun. Uh, I would like to start uh, with a quote which I usually use by Peter Drucker, the management thinker. You cannot manage what you can't measure, which simply means you can't know whether or not you are successful unless success is defined and tracked. As a business, we all track our PNL as an indicator, but it is is that enough? What really needs to be done is start logging in various data capture points in the entire life cycle of your business. For sufficiency, enough data capture points have to be enabled towards help in getting trend and analysis, which in turn would give you a different perspective on your business. A common example is capturing data of customers. Which customers buys what, at what time, at what frequency, under what circumstances. Such captures lead to sufficient data, which in turn help getting the right analysis for you to take real-time decisions. And with regards to data accuracy, the most simple and known rule is to keep only one single database. Do not keep multiple Excel files. That means moving on to a centralized software, preferably on the cloud. Good. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Nehar. Um, I would also now uh, request Rahul Sai for his views on um, cash management services. Uh, what kind of platforms through digitalization can assist the MSMEs in better financial uh, monitoring? Uh, now, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to say that it's an honor to be here. Uh, and uh, am I audible to everyone just to make sure that uh, because Okay, perfect. Uh, so just to answer that, uh, I think uh, as, uh, as uh, Anpamji just asked the question around cash management, uh, Atulji had mentioned in his, uh, in his uh, inputs a little earlier that cash crunch and liquidity crunch is going to be uh, critical uh, and it's going to hit most of the MSMEs pretty badly. Uh, as it is, most of the MSMEs uh, have uh, thin margins. Now, 
uh, getting stuck with the liquidity issues and cash issues uh, that is going to be uh, you know further compounding the problem uh, given the current covid uh, crisis as well uh, what we are seeing and at the moment uh, uh, i work closely with a lot of, lot of msmes uh, through my uh, channel network uh, what we are seeing is that uh, most of the end customers uh, they are sending notices to uh, msmes for uh, increasing the credits uh they are invoking force majeure clauses uh and suspending orders uh all of this while the msmes continue to uh, incur fixed costs of uh, plant and machinery and labor uh so this is going to, it's a double whammy for uh, uh, for most of the msmes at this moment and this scenario is likely to persist for a while it's not a situation that's going to go away easy because most of the companies are holding on to their cash now uh coming to uh, digitalization uh that for me is uh, definitely an area of focus where most msmes should look at uh, from two main perspectives uh the first is looking at from a business uh, and a demand generation standpoint uh because there are several trade service platforms available uh and uh, you know anyone can just google and get an understanding things like global linker or you know and the like where a lot of msmes can participate uh, so like that these platforms have uh, participants from over 150 different countries uh, so for msmes that are looking at international business uh, this is uh, such platforms can be uh, a huge area for demand generation uh, and uh, also because network effects kick in uh, it's also likely to reduce the uh, transaction uh, costs uh the other critical area is from a risk mitigation standpoint uh where uh, so i i'm sure most of us have seen that uh, rbi had recently approved uh, uh trade receivable discounting system or uh, treds uh where uh, where uh, this platform fundamentally uh, facilitates trade receivable financing of msmes specifically Uh, where uh, corporate buyers and multiple financiers also are exist on the same platform uh, now uh, what uh, uh, the advantage here is that this is not limited to msmes uh, uh, which have only the manufacturing certificate it's uh, it includes both manufacturing and services uh, the other advantage is that because there are multiple financiers as well and multiple uh, corporates that uh, transact on this uh msmes can get into transaction specific factoring uh now uh, factoring is something that can uh, hedge risks uh, for msmes and uh, having the ability to look at transaction specific factoring i think that's a that's a huge uh, boon for msmes uh what the platform also allows for is reverse factoring uh so if there are corporates looking or if corporates see particular risks with particular transaction they can organize for financing as uh, as well via reverse factoring uh, method so uh, again uh, as the network effects kick in and uh, multiple participants uh, get on to treds uh, i think this uh, uh, platforms like these are going to be critical uh, going ahead uh, given the the headwinds that we see in the form of the covid crisis thank you uh, rahul uh, getting back to atul uh, Uh, since we already discussed the concept of data sufficiency and accuracy and one of the major problems that uh, the msmes face is uh, lack of adequate uh, financing available to them uh, i wanted to know from you what this kind of data sufficiency accuracy through a digitalization would it assist the msmes to access financial institutions in a much better fashion no most certainly yes uh, you know just to give an example uh, in 2008 9 the reserve bank made it compulsory for banks to have uh, msmes with a borrowing of 5 crores and above to be rated now an example uh, where the digitization could have helped is that uh, msmes typically tend to pay attention to their suppliers more now if there was a hypothetical situation where a creditor needed to be paid and uh, you know you could afford to ignore payment of working capital interest or term loan interest 
by saying that you know let me pay the supplier i can defer the payment to bank by you know two days or five days or seven days now not realizing that this has actually been considered as a default by there's some network problem mr atul there's some network problem we lost you in between you'll have to say that again can you, can you hear me now can you hear me now yeah okay so uh, uh, what really happened is that because the promoters did not have a grip on the cash flows of the organization they were not able to make a decision between what is it that they should deploy the available cash to uh, putting together the let's say cash flow that they have at hand what are the obligations over the next 25 30 days and how to take care and what to prioritize this would actually build in a lot of transparency in their operations a lot of transparency in their financials and this in turn would lead a comfort zone to the banks who are lending to them or even nbfcs or private lenders or for that matter even private equity people once they see that there is transparency through digitization a uh, transparency in their operations transparency in their accounts a lot of avenues for funding would open up uh, one of the things which i would like to say is that you know the trade finance credit risk insurance uh, is yet to take off in a very big way in india and that's something which i think over the next few months or few years uh, would see a very big application among the msme where they would be able to insure their risk uh, whether as buyer or as supplier and for that a full front end necessity is going to be uh, uh, you know digitization of their operations good yeah thank you so much uh, nehar back to you uh, talking about digitalization as the main emphasis here would it be helpful for sme msmes to access organized and global markets if digitalization is emphasized upon uh, well yes uh, clearly compliance is the way forward to enter enter organized global markets uh, because such marketplaces require accurate data to sell buy or also to bid to achieve this your processes need to be digitized for eliminating human errors and use of centralized software platforms are a must these softwares have been expensive in the past but that's not the case anymore tech platforms now offer software as a service and business analytics offerings which help connect with uh, potential clients to grow their business further msmes are fragmented and don't have economics of scales these platforms help aggregate demand and bring scale and efficiency to a segment which never had it one of such platforms i would like to talk is about a platform called global linker it's a b2b uh, global networking transaction uh, platform which helps msmes to do business efficiently they help you create company website digital product catalogs connecting you with suppliers and customers globally and also offer a wide range of services from insurance to logistics indian companies like khata book Rivigo, Tally, uh, Zoho, they are also offering a range of low-cost or pay-per-use technologies for all MSMEs. Payments receivable with such platforms have come down from 70% to 30% because of automated reminders. Adopting such tools is the need for of the hour post COVID-19. Behar, your network is a little. Yeah, you can uh, now hear me. Uh, Gautam, is it okay to proceed? Uh, Anupam ji, we can hear you. Uh, Nihar's voice was a little low. Okay. Uh, now going forward, uh, Rahul, uh, the next question to you, um, and this is very very important in the current context because the supply chain has completely broken down. and so graded uh, relaxation on supply chain itself is, will have its own uh, challenges now uh, for the msmes uh, how can we make the supply chain more efficient through digitalization that's the point sure uh, and uh, uh, actually just to be able to answer that uh, that question uh, 
uh, I just want to go back to uh, what exactly is the intent of, uh, of what we want to do by a supply chain. So the intent here is twofold. Uh, from a short-term standpoint, looking at cost optimization, uh, reducing cycle times and inventory. Uh, from, uh, from a long-term perspective, obviously, is uh, improving the overall supply chain efficiency uh, such that it leads to customer satisfaction. So that's the long-term intent. Now, if you were to look at the already existing problems for, uh, for uh, MSMEs, uh, if you were to look at uh, you know, some key issues, uh, the customers are constantly increasing or you know, their expectations are constantly increasing. Uh, keeping control of costs, uh, especially in areas of transportation, uh, that's, that's one key area. Uh, risk identification and mitigation. And the next three that I'm going to say are even more critical for, uh, for MSMEs uh, because MS, most MSMEs don't have supply chain visibility to the extent that allows them to make, uh, make good decisions. Uh, again, building and maintaining a supplier uh, and uh, partner relationships, that's another key area. And uh, keeping up to date with all the technology developments that are happening. Uh, so these are all the key issues that the supply chain uh, you know, uh, struggles with. Uh, specifically for MSMEs, and uh, if uh, if I have to uh, look at what we did uh, within our company uh, to address some of these challenges, uh, what we uh, implemented in 2014 uh, was a, a like a, a robust tool uh, where all of our channel partners transact on. And uh, what this uh, what this tool does is end to end from uh, from lead tracking, order generation, quotation submission. Uh, inventory management. So inventory is another key area where uh, we started getting into uh, deep dives uh, around what are the min-max uh, SKUs, how do you ensure the right reordering levels, and uh, looking at vis providing visibility of shipments and invoicing. Uh, so all of these, uh, all of these initiatives uh, helped us reduce the excess inventory with our uh, our partners uh, by a significant amount. Uh, when we did the analysis, it was close to about sixty-five percent. Uh, and that, that really helped us. Uh, but that is something that we did as a principle. Now, if I were to look around uh, and see digital platforms that are available to MSMEs outside, uh, there are several such technology enabled services that are being provided. And a lot of startups are coming into this space. Uh, if you were to look at any startup or any company that's, uh, that's providing uh, supply chain via uh, some sort of technology enablement or a digital platform, there are th three main themes there. Uh, the first is giving visibility and business intelligence. Uh, so if you're looking at things like uh, warehouse management, real time uh, tracking of operations and shipping, uh, these are all key areas where uh, MSMEs need uh, skill sets and uh, need to develop there. And there are platforms that allow for that. Uh, the second uh, bit is around automation of uh, labor intensive activities. Uh, in fact, uh, internally, what we have uh, started looking at is if, uh, if the activities are labor intensive and can be automated, we are already looking at uh, low cost uh, robotic uh, process automation tools. And uh, that's allowing us to, uh, to basically completely automate uh, some of our backend processes. Uh, so MSMEs need to uh, consciously look at these uh, initiatives. The third and probably the most important thing is uh, how do you get better at forecasting? Now, uh, I did mention a little bit about how we are uh, working with our channel partners and analyzing uh, inventories, etc. Uh, these uh, today platforms allow for uh, AI enabled uh, supplier selections, uh, audits, evaluations, uh, you know, inventory optimization. So all of these kind of tools are available and these platforms are also available. Uh, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of supply chain uh, companies today are offering integrated services. Uh, I, I was actually talking to somebody from uh, delivery uh, recently, and these are some of the key focus areas for them as well. Uh, so what MSMEs need to start uh, looking at, uh, especially going ahead, given the current scenario, is how do you get on to more of these platforms? How do we ensure that those uh, network effects and uh, economies of scale kick in such that the overall cost of transaction finally comes down? Yeah, thank you, Rahul. Uh, 
Nehar, uh, the next question to you is that uh, one of one of the things which I put up in my presentation, which is very different from uh, the Indian scenario, is that in uh, Germany the metal stand provide about 82 percent of the skilled manpower to the larger companies, to to the rest of the world probably. Uh, in India, the situation is quite different. Uh, uh, for the MSMEs, we require better skilling. Uh, how do you think digitalization can be of assistance uh, in skilling the workforce? Uh, am I audible? Uh, yes. Uh, well, yes, uh, digitization uh, would uh, definitely is the way forward. Uh, new technologies allow learners to access cutting-edge tools such as adaptive learning. This system uses AI and uh, ML algorithms to modify learning material in real time in response to the learner's performance. The predictive capabilities of AI helps the instructor understand trends and patterns in learner's performance. Technologies such as uh, virtual reality and augmented reality allow immersive experiences that especially appeal to certain category of learners. Hazardous job trainings can be given on VR to reduce the risk of training on a live hazardous environment. Tech startups like uh, Lore for Teams are helping MSMEs with onboarding and enabling the creation of a central repository of knowledge through something called as a knowledge wallet. This wallet uh, helps employees by able to uniformly learn about processes, products, plans, and much more. The need for technical know-how and skill resources have hindered a more widespread adoption of digital technology across the sector. The government has lined up several initiatives towards this, I would like to say, including technology centers to speed up this digitalization process. There are 18 technology centers built across the country, which aim to provide access and advisory services on the latest technologies to MSMEs, which also are doubling up as skill development centers. To conclude, I insist that MSMEs must shape a people strategy using AI and automation. Organizations should plan and provide training and support to, for employees to ensure learning keeps pace with technology. Great, thank you so much, Nehar, for the very interesting inputs. Uh, Rahul, you wanted to add something, I understand, on this point? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, Nihar spoke about, uh, you know, uh, leveraging AI and, uh, and machine learning. And uh, I just wanted to say that uh, we have also been, uh, you know, at the back end, uh, evaluating a lot of such uh, initiatives. Uh, so, one such initiative that, uh, that we had uh, piloted is uh, looking at our uh, customer uh, response data. So what we do is we collect uh, information from our end customers, which our uh, channel partners are, uh, are serving uh, around what kind of insights we can get from them. So this is in the form of an NPS uh, survey. Now, what we did was uh, we deployed uh, uh, machine learning algorithms and uh, self-learning algorithms on the customer data. And what we were able to do was uh, derive uh, insights around uh, not just the loyalty scores, which anyway, uh, the NPS was giving us, but also around their overall sentiment. And uh, we were able to look at uh, textual data and pinpoint what is the key root cause of the issue, uh, which earlier never existed. Uh, so, uh, so as uh, Nihar had mentioned, uh, machine learning and uh, being able to deploy these algorithms uh, for uh, benefit of uh, MSMEs is critical. Now, in our case, we do it as a principle, uh, but uh, for MSMEs as well, uh, one can't afford to ignore digital any longer. Uh, so they need to get on to some open source uh, uh, opportunities for machine learning and start uh, looking at uh, initiatives for digitization and leveraging technology. Thank you so much. Uh, in fact, the next question to you, Rahul, uh, is that uh, would digitalization also enhance environmental com compliance by MSMEs? Because this going forward will be a very, very pertinent, uh, maybe obstacle in case of MSMEs. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and to be honest, uh, uh, that's perhaps one of the most critical uh, questions ahead of us. Uh, because given the, the current 
situation and uh, the impact of COVID, uh, if you were to look at environment, health and safety, because uh, the three of them uh, go in together, uh, there, is, uh, uh, there is going to be a lot of focus going forward. Uh, uh, in the past, if you were to look at uh, some of the legal frameworks and the adherence by the MSMEs, uh, they, the adherence was poor at best. Uh, and if you were to look at, uh, you know, we have very clearly defined uh, frameworks that the MSMEs need to adhere to, ranging from Water, Air, Environment Protection Act, 1986, etc. Uh, but uh, but uh, the adherence has been uh, very low. And uh, this is primarily because of two reasons. Uh, the first reason is that uh, compliance per se has never been part of the master plan when any uh, MSME or when any uh, entrepreneur is looking to kickstart a business. Uh, they don't keep compliance as part of their uh, overall master plan. Now, uh, the other big issue is that there is a huge dearth of skill sets when it comes to uh, the understanding of the legal frameworks and appropriate interpretation in context of the particular MSME. Because uh, these laws are evolving, uh, the states have their own uh, frameworks at times, and it gets really complicated for uh, for a lot of MSMEs to to develop that understanding. Uh, what so even within our current framework, and this is likely to get even more stringent. Uh, what people don't necessarily always realize is that there are very severe penalties if these MSMEs are caught uh, not fulfilling their uh, environmental and health obligations. And these range from uh, operational penalties, where there could be suspension of business, uh, to monetary penalties, where there can be 100% uh, of the instances will attract fines. And 70% of, uh, of issues, or uh, in case that there is non-compliance, attract imprisonment of the officers of the board. Uh, now, this has not been very rigorously enforced in the past. Uh, but what uh, what I see going uh, going ahead is that there is going to be a lot more enforcement and stricter implementation of these legal frameworks. Uh, now coming to how digital uh, can actually help in this area. Now the good news is that there are several low cost digital platforms that have uh, looked at this opportunity, and uh, there are multiple tools uh, which have come up. Uh, I mean, I was actually just checking online and. Uh, there are tools like uh, Complinity, Simpliance, Compli. So there are multiple such tools that are available. Uh, and uh, what they actually do is they clearly articulate the law. Uh, what is the current government advisory on that law? And what is the interpretation as per the state of application? And uh, that actually gives uh, a lot of power to the MSMEs because there is constant guidance available. Uh, and it addresses the second issue that I had uh, raised earlier uh, around a lack of knowledge of, of uh, you know, the, the framework and the compliance. Uh, so this is one clear area where uh, MSMEs need to get on. Uh, in fact, uh, if I were to talk about our experience, uh, even we recently transitioned on, uh, on CompliPlus, which is a tool that allows us to ensure compliance. And uh, and we've had a had a pretty good experience. Uh, Rahul, that. sorry, I'm interjecting. So there's yeah. a question coming. Can you name some other tools? You've just mentioned one. Uh, can you mention some other tools which can be useful for MSMEs? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, so I spoke about uh, CompliPlus, which is what we've done. There are other tools like uh, Complinity, uh, Simpliance, and these are online tools that anyone can uh, can get on. Uh, and uh, and a lot of MSMEs have already uh, have already begun to transact and get on to these uh, tools. Uh, so I, I don't know if that helps with the answer. Okay. Thank you, Rahul. Uh, now, uh, we, we need to wrap up our discussion. But before we do that, uh, I want to bring in Atul again. And uh, Atul, uh, as far as the current situation is concerned, um, there are a lot of Government of India schemes uh, which we need to probably speak about so that there is a consolidated uh, input to all the listeners we have. Um, now, some of the schemes which I thought are relevant is the Credit Guarantee Fund scheme from MSMEs, uh, Pradhan Mantri Mudra Yojana, Stand Up India, and anything else that comes to your mind as far as incentivization of MSMEs is concerned. 
Atul. And uh, whatever is to the uh, working capital limit of uh, the MSME, they have given 10% as an ad hoc limit to be sanctioned by the banks uh, to MSME. Now here, uh, procedurally, the uh, because it's a it's an option and it's not a compulsion given as a directive by Reserve Bank to banks. So the MSME needs to apply to their bankers and say that we need to avail that 10% uh, incremental limits, uh, which is for 36 months. So that is one thing. Second thing, I think the MSMEs need to pick up with the with their own bankers is the ability to have usage of uh, CGT MSA, which is a very good point uh, you brought in. You see what happens here is that CGT SME would guarantee the exposure of MSME to the banks. So as far as the bank is concerned, the credit risk is now a triple A risk and it moves away from the MSME. So it's a very good tool which the MSME must need to work with CGT SME and the banks. And this, the, uh, <coughs> sorry, the CGT SME is housed in uh, within SIDB in Mumbai. So, you know, in the Bandra Kurla complex. So I think the SMEs should be encouraged to usage uh, of that particular facility and able to increment their working capital and the term loans both. The third part which you mentioned is about the mudra loans, but I'm not really sure whether mudra amounts and the mudra loans would really be helpful to the, uh, to the SME. However, the government is also looking at Startup India, some kind of incentives. Now, those entities which have just gotten into uh, the startup activities, especially into manufacturing, there are facilities available through the central government as well as some incentives from the state governments, depending upon the state of location of the unit, uh, where they can apply for that financial assistance and get uh, availment of that. Uh, I would definitely encourage SMEs to explore the trade, uh, trade finance credit risk insurance as a product away from uh, ECGC. ECG provides, definitely provides, but private trade insurance also provide uh, this kind of uh, insurance on uh, your trade transactions which can then be discounted, forfeited, or even availed as an incremental lines from the banking seg segment. So I think that is something which uh, the SME should also explore. So while you're there, Atul, uh, just one additional question, because as soon as this uh, process of lockdown began and, and everyone knew that we are in for a bit of uh, difficulty for the MSMEs, uh, there was a financial package announced by the Ministry of Finance uh, of 170,000 crores. Now, largely this, uh, this addressed the MSMEs both in the NBFC space as well as MSMEs per se. Uh, what is your opinion on that package and what more should be, uh, because we are expecting the next package now, what more would, uh, would the MSMEs expect from the government? I think that uh, package which was announced 1,70,000 crores was okay to the extent of only about 40-50,000 crores because that was the direct benefit given to uh, the manufacturing sector. The rest was more in terms of you know utilization of the FCI, the Food Corporation of India's uh, uh, food reserves and you know distribution etc. But the more focus was more to more like 40-50,000 crores. Uh, what I would like to also mention here is what Reserve Bank recently announced in terms of uh, funding to NABARD, funding to NHB and funding to SIDB. Now the issue is that SIDB, NHB and NABARD have received in an aggregate 50,000 crores, but there is no guideline how these institutions are going to use it. For example, SIDB, if it uses only to refinance the bank's existing SME portfolio, there is no incremental benefits going to SME. I think the government should actually bring in a guideline that this can be used by SIDB only to finance the SME, number one, or the SIDB should be given a guideline if they want to do refinance. It has to be incremental portfolio after uh, created after the lockdown is lifted and not for the existing portfolio. I think government needs to really tighten that to ensure that the uh, pass-through happens to SME. Uh, government also needs to look at uh, you know, the state finance corporations and the MIDC, which they have, 
uh, whereby if MIDC could give in some kind of uh, you know subsidy on the electricity consumption, uh, we had made the recommendation to Maharashtra state government, and I think MIDC is actually going to pass on some kind of power subsidy in terms of rates to the uh, entities in Maharashtra. Uh, similarly, state finance corporation needs to be activated if they could supplement the uh, efforts of uh, making available some kind of short-term loans to MSME, which can then be paid over next 18 to 24 months uh, you know, by the SMEs. So there are a lot of things which uh, we are working with the government in terms of recommendations. Now, one last point, uh, not the last, but the last, but one I would say. Uh, today I read uh, this uh, news item which says that the Central Board of Direct Taxes has come out with a plea to the MSME sector to claim their uh, income tax uh, refunds online, and which is a huge amount. So do you, are you aware of the reasons as to why MSMEs are not claiming their income tax refunds? No, I guess, uh, you know, by and large, these refunds have been stuck uh, at the regulatory authority level rather than at the MSME level. I don't think anybody would let go of, uh, you know, a refund or an inflow in these times. So I guess they're just creating a facilitation by encouraging MSMEs to, you know, reach out. There may be a, uh, you know, a possibility of uh, disability within the income tax to reach out individually to the MSME where the refund is due. So by building a bridge like this, they are able to facilitate uh, a faster refund process. Now, uh, just the last bit, uh, since you are involved also with the trade uh, associations and the government, uh, Atul, uh, just uh, off the out of box thinking, since we have been talking about digitalization so much, uh, it came upon my uh, mind that can we suggest to the government for a technical upgradation fund on similar lines as for the textile industry, Tufts uh, scheme for digitalized uh, upgradation. So it could be called textile upgradation fund extended to the whole MSME sector rather than just the textile sector, particularly to enable digitalization. It's a fantastic idea. I mean, very, very good idea. And I think uh, we will include that in our recommendation to the government. Definitely it is required and this is something which would help we actually create a strong backbone of our MSME, which will in turn result into a lot of exports and uh, you know cost saving, making our MSME very, very competitive. Excellent uh, thought. Uh, definitely we should consider and recommend this to the government. Okay, I also have a few questions coming in from the attendees. So uh, am I free to ask those questions now? No, yeah, go ahead. Okay, uh, so first question coming in from uh, Darshan Parekh. As a lawyer, I am being repeatedly asked a question. Our buyers, mainly international buyers, have cancelled the orders. How do we survive and how can we close down our operations? Uh, the question is open to the house, whoever wants to answer this. Atul, would you like to take that? I think Nehar is taking that. Okay. Uh, because of digitization, uh, usually when you trade with international partners uh, and there is uh, someone cancels an order, you are left to the mercy of international trade laws. This is uh, very important that you have a digital aggregator, maybe like Amazon or the products that are used, who are you know, mediators. And they are the ones who also uh, balance out at both the parties. They also uh, discuss on why the cancellation happens. And there is someone uh, where you can go directly to. Otherwise, the government process is quite lengthy. So I, uh, I would also add a bit of information on this. Uh, you know, the International Chamber of Commerce has debated this uh, topic about force major, uh, particularly which is being invoked by most of the international traders to cancel orders. And uh, they wanted to, ICC wanted to define this clearly, but finally they came to the conclusion that it is left to the interpretation of individual countries and their legislation as to how force major should be treated within commercial contracts. Perfect, nice. Uh, so the next question coming in from Sanjeev Pandey, any unexpected changes in the role of HR in enabling this transformation? 
to get over uh, resin resistance resistance in labor intensive msmes who would rahul, like to answer that rahul would come in rahul uh, sure yeah uh, so i think uh, i mean absolutely uh, uh, hr has uh, has a huge role to play uh, uh, right from uh, the entire navigation of the current situation because as uh, uh, as we start reopening slowly uh all uh, the implementation of all the tools and enforcement of all the uh, the frameworks uh needs to be very clearly articulated and implemented and uh, and hr clearly has a very important uh, role to play there uh because finally people need to uh, follow the norms that uh, uh, that are being uh, being articulated so i mean right off the bat hr has a huge role to play there okay uh there are two questions from mr rohit pandya so i will just take both the questions together which are the msme sectors which are most vulnerable to the corona virus how do we mitigate the ill effects and second question that he is asking how does increasing digitalization mitigate the impact of downside effect of novel corona virus on msme companies Who would like to take that Atul, would you like to take the first part? Yeah. The first question. Uh, I would like to share a screen, which you would answer uh, just a second. Can you see the screen, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So these are the sectors uh, which are most vulnerable. If you can see which are the potential winners, which go into the losses, what happens in the recording the economics of COVID nineteen? Okay. Excellent. Yeah, we can share this uh, later on. Sure. And and the second question. Neha, are you back for the second? I'll ask the second question again. How does increasing digitalization mitigate the impact of downside effect of novel coronavirus on MSME companies? So, to my mind, just to kickstart the uh, answer, maybe others would come in. But uh, the basic point is that social distancing having become an important part of of uh, COVID nineteen uh, prevention. Uh, the only way to do it is through digitalization. There is there is uh, hardly any alternates available. So that's where the importance of uh, digitalization comes. In. Um, I just uh, I just add to what Anupam ji is saying. Uh, I think the webinar that we are holding today is a classic example of uh, of uh, an, uh, a digitalization initiative uh, because uh, what we are uh, thereby eliminating is the need for people to congregate together in a seminar hall and thereby uh, preventing uh, uh, proliferation of uh, of the novel corona virus. Uh, so, uh, uh, which is why. Uh, most companies are now looking at uh, you know work from home options to the employees that can because there are certain jobs that can be done from home certain jobs that may not necessarily uh, you know you might not be able to do so uh, depending on evaluation at an activity level what msmes need to do is the jobs that can be done from you know a remote location allow people the flexibility to do that and set up tools uh, like we are using zoom today but uh, there are multiple such uh, uh, open source tools available uh, and uh, that will allow productivity and uh, and uh, you know uh, the the work to continue uh, so just my two cents so uh, also to add uh, rohit there is uh, there is the concept of internet of things and machine learning these concepts have been primarily primarily instigated by the fact that uh, uh social distancing uh, skilling of workforce uh, so that that's the whole idea about this okay there is one more uh, very pertinent question from sujeet he says one of the big differences between msmes and large companies is in their r&d investment are there any ways msmes can leverage digital tools to innovate cost effectively please also share any example to give the context um, should i uh, can i take that yeah so uh, absolutely please please yeah, uh, yeah absolutely uh, please sure uh, so uh, so absolutely i think uh, there is a huge difference between uh, between large corporates uh, the kind of funds available uh, the kind of uh, capex allocated to to r and d uh, uh, investments 
uh, msmes uh, on the other hand uh, the scenario would differ depending on the nature of the msme uh, so uh, which is why if you were to look at uh, uh, specifically rnd it's important to uh, one use get on to open source platforms because what open source platforms allow you to do especially around digitalization uh, is they are they are free so they are uh, effectively free of cost so you can get access to a lot of research or uh, technology uh, which is uh, which is completely free and i'll give some examples of that as well uh, the second is uh, going by uh, industry bodies and that's a i mean uh, you know you you bring together uh, similar uh, people from uh, similar industry uh, and a former body and uh, then you look at uh, investments through the body so that's the those are the two options available to msmes uh, if i were to go back to my first uh, the first point i raised i'll actually talk about uh, some of the analytics work that we're doing uh, and uh, we started using a tool called r uh, for uh, data analytics and uh, and nihar i'm sure will know a lot more about it but uh, uh, but what uh, what's actually happening on r is that most uh, research and uh, uh, you know uh, 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 universities are uh, creating algorithm and th these are cutting edge algorithms that they are creating and they are letting people use it free of cost on this platform uh, and uh, so for example uh, some of the work that i earlier mentioned about uh, sentiment analysis or uh, you know looking at uh, artificial neural networks for making sense of uh, of uh, the textual data that uh, that our customers are talking about uh, uh, what was great is that when we first started out on that journey uh, the tools that we were using were uh, tools of microsoft and google and they were high cost like they were i mean they were very expensive so if you look at microsoft cognitive services that does this kind of work it is expensive and it is unaffordable for an msme to do that or to use that uh, but we shifted our focus towards open source and we looked at r and all of this analysis that we were earlier going to pay you know several hundreds of thousands of dollars for is now done free of cost so those are the tools that uh, msmes need to uh, need to focus on of course given their uh, their industry and uh, need okay there are more questions but i'll take this as the last because we have reached at uh, our, our closing time so this this question is from nikun jain uh, he says with this covid 19 situation after lockdown msmes would face liquidity crunch and there could be uh, there there could also be other business impacts as well keeping these things in view can we say that msmes would postpone their digitalization expenditure by 2 3 years can we ask mr atul joshi to answer this but liquidity crunch uh, cannot uh, you know uh, should not be considered as a final a decision to postpone it indefinitely i think 3 years is a very 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 long time uh, i guess what we need to do as an msme is that find our roots get our operation started and stabilize it immediately now there are various financing tools whereby you will be able to you know stabilize your operations and manage some of the risks uh, especially the operational credit risks such as using of uh, uh, trade finance credit risk cover uh, for counterparties now once you have done that i think 6 to 12 months time you would need to focus on your operations which cannot ignore uh, the digitization uh, which is a necessity uh, what my co panelists have mentioned both of them have mentioned about several tools available free of cost so i guess the investment needs to be done in these tools the research what is the most appropriate for us at the same time some of these uh, you know i can give an example of a very very large uh, fmcg company which has asked its hr to ensure that 20% of the workforce now works only from home they want to actually vacate office spaces by and they've given a deadline of june 15th so we are talking about an a company which is employing more than 3000 people 20% of the workforce of the office premises so there are ways and means to save costs and the day starts today if you do that in a very rational manner very focused manner you don't need to push it for 3 years you can start even now especially you know learning from my co panelists they both have made some very good points that there are a lot of tools available free of cost start using them 
So I guess uh, the day starts now. Yes, and also to add a bit to that, uh, we need to keep in mind, as we said, 2007-8 uh, global financial crisis, we have to keep that in mind that both things have to happen simultaneously, your present liquidity crunch and your future technology requirement. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. What a lovely session this has been. So uh, I, I really thank all the panelists, Mr. Rahul Sahai, Mr. Atul Joshi, Mr. Nihar Pathare, and our moderator, Mr. Anupam Chaturvedi, for this flawless session. Uh, well, this was the first session from Pine Tree Pictures, and I'm sure all the 45 attendees who are participating in this have got their questions answered. Uh, our next session is coming on the 2nd of May, and the subject is Healthcare Industry Challenges and Response to the Pandemic COVID-19. So request you to please log on to that. Uh, it will be again at the same time between 12.30 and 1.30. And once again, thank you very much for being a part of this. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Absolutely a pleasure. Thank you thank so you, much. Thank you. Thank you, Nihar. Thank you, Vistatul. Thank, thank you, Rahul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.